Hi guys, welcome to my studio. First, I want to apologize because I recorded this video with audio and then my audio file got corrupted. So now I'm re-recording. So if you notice that my hand movements and the words I'm saying don't match, that's why. So this first thing I'm showing you is I have been working on a way that I could transfer my handwriting onto fabric. And of course I tried some other ways like paint pens and just writing directly on the fabric, but I was just never really happy with how it came out. So I've been experimenting with different transfer techniques and I have finally found one that works, I will say 99% of the time. And so I had shown it on Instagram last week and so now I'm going to bring it to you here today. So this first piece I'm showing you is the piece that I finally had success with. That book that I showed you is just to let you know that all of that writing that you see is just poems out of that book. Sometimes I just want to watch TV in my studio and not be bothered with thinking about journaling or having thoughts or any of that. I just want to kind of zone out. So I'll put on like my favorite murder mystery and I'll grab a book of poems or song lyrics or something like that and just go ahead and copy that onto the piece that I'm going to transfer from. So that's what that whole sheet is. And the first thing that most people ask me is how long did that take? And it was exactly two episodes of my murder mystery. So here I'm showing you the fabric piece, which is what I've pulled off, has transferred all of the ink that I wrote onto this fabric, which is actually cheesecloth. I experimented with a couple different fabrics, but as far as the looks and the transparency, I like cheesecloth the most. And you'll notice here on the back, because that's where it's pulling the ink from, it's a little darker on the back versus on the front it's a little more subdued so it does kind of give you two different options as you're using those for collage if you want something a little darker so we're going to start talking about products that we need this reynolds plastic coated freezer paper is the secret so i tried deli paper i tried wax paper i tried unwaxed freezer paper I tried waxed freezer paper. I tried, I, I don't even know all the things I tried. I know I tried um, some sewing interface. I tried a bunch of different papers. And this Reynolds plastic coated freezer paper is the one that works. So that's what I'll be using in this little experiment that I'm showing you. Then I have my matte medium. We use a lot of matte medium in this project, so don't use your expensive golden matte medium. This is a cheaper, this is Artist Lofts brand. I bought it at Michael's, but any sort of cheaper matte medium you can use. And it needs to be one that's a little watery so that as you shake it, you can kind of hear it sloshing around. You don't want a really thick medium for this because it'll make your fabric a lot stiffer. You need something to apply your matte medium with. So I'm using this little silicone tool. It, it's my favorite, but you could use an old credit card or something like that. And then just a regular old Sharpie marker. I used an ultra fine point. You can use whatever you want. This is the cheesecloth. I bought the one at the grocery store. So in the section where the saran wrap and aluminum foil and stuff is, you can buy these pieces of cheesecloth. That's a piece of muslin. I ended up trying the muslin and I'm just not really, I don't like the look. Um, it doesn't transfer dark enough for me. So for our freezer paper, when you pull your freezer paper off of the roll. If you buy the Reynolds one, just like I have, the outside of the roll is uncoated. 
and the inside is the plastic coated. It's somewhat hard to read on camera, but you can see how that has kind of a shiny look to it. The other side is very matte, so it's pretty easy to figure out which one is plastic coated and which one isn't. But your writing has to be on the plastic coated side. If you put it on the other side that's just the paper, the ink will just absorb into the paper. Um, and when you add the matte medium, it'll just adhere to it. So you just want to make sure that as you pull your paper off, you're aware of which side is the plastic coated. And as you pull your pages off, you can cut them down to whatever size you want. I ended up cutting mine. They're approximately 8 by 11, 9 by 11, somewhere around there, just to make it more manageable. So these are my pieces of freezer paper that I had cut down and I went ahead and did some writing and doodles and things on them so that you didn't have to watch me do all that. Um, this first page, I wanted some bigger print because that, that first one I had done had very small script. So I wanted to do something a little bigger. Again, I was watching TV, so I pulled up some song lyrics. Um, I also have a page in here that has just qu random quotes by Frida Kahlo. And I typically, when I write these, I do no punctuation, no capitalization. It's just a long stream of words. Um, and here I'm just talking about the different sizes. So you can kind of play around. You may even want to do some with print if that's something that you want to do. There's really like no end to what you can do on these. So this is my larger print. And then um, I also have some sheets that have some doodles. I think that's the next one I'm going to show you. Yep. So I just wanted to have a collection of doodles. This one I think will be great because as I cut off sections... I can, you know, grab multiple patterns. I don't have to use just one pattern. So you notice I didn't do the patterns in a block. I kind of let them flow into each other. This is a page of my abstract flowers. So I wanted to have those. I think those would be great to add into some of my fabric collages or paper collages that I incorporate some fabric in. And then this is another page of smaller writing, very similar to the first sample that I showed you. And I'm going to go ahead and just finish out this line. And with the Sharpie, it dries pretty quick. Um, I would say that by the time you've written two lines, the first line that you've written is dry. So it doesn't take a long time to dry at all. Um, but you do want to go ahead and get all your writing down and uh, then we'll do go ahead to the next step. So I'm just going to throw some music on. I'll speed this up so you can see me finishing out this page and then we'll move on. Okay, so now we have all of these pages covered with different writing and doodles and flowers. And so we are going to go ahead and grab our cheesecloth now. So remember, grocery store, I know cheesecloth is also available at the fabric store. Um, but honestly, the grocery store is just much more convenient for me. And for $3, I get more cheesecloth. I'll, I'll probably lose that roll before I use it all and then I'll buy another one at the grocery store. So what I'm going to do is just pull off a section of that cheesecloth and then I'm going to cut it down so it's about the size of the pages that I'm working on. So I'll go ahead and pull those out. 
Like I said, the pages I'm using are about 9 by 11, approximately. I really just pulled off one big sheet of freezer paper and then cut it into fours. So it was a little more manageable to work with on my surface. If you have a larger desk, you could probably just leave it large and do all one sheet. It's completely up to you. Here I'm just showing you the little ragged bits because I didn't cut it in a perfect straight line. That does not bother me. I actually, the reason I think I like cheesecloth for this project so much more is because it does fray. So I'm able to use that in my work. Here I'm just bending the paper backwards because it was on that roll so it still wants to roll up a little bit and I don't want that to happen once I have my matte medium on it. So I'm just rolling it back on itself so that I can make sure it stays down. And you can see here that Sharpie is dry and ready to go. So I have my matte medium out. I have my silicone tool and the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a layer of my matte medium over top of the Sharpie writing. And the key here is to make sure you're using enough medium. I did put down some old newsprint under my surface here because it can get messy. You want to make sure that you have medium all over. Um, so that your fabric will lie nice and flat and adhere completely down to your surface. That's the key to getting that print to transfer. So I'm just going to make sure I get a nice good layer all the way around. Um, like I said, very important to use enough. That's why we use the cheaper one so that you don't feel like you need to be stingy or that you're using, you know, $10 worth of matte medium to do this project. I think that jar that I'm using that I said I bought at Michael's was maybe six or seven dollars. Um, it does say professional quality, but it's not, again, it's not a golden or a Liquitex product. So I have that first layer down. I'm going to grab my cheesecloth and then I'm just going to carefully lay it over my words. Here I'll just tap it down. I don't need to really press too much because we'll be putting another layer of matte medium over it. I just want to make sure I can minimize how much that fabric is going to move around. Then I'll just repeat that same process. I'm going to pour some more matte medium on and move it all around. As you get closer to the corners you may want to take a finger and just kind of hold the fabric down because it will want to pull away. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do all four pages. You can see here I'm trying to fix that little corner that pulled away from me. So I'm going to go ahead and do all four pages exactly the same way. A layer of matte medium. Don't let it dry. Then put the fabric down. Again, don't let it dry. This is all wet on wet. So wet matte medium, then the cheesecloth, then more wet matte medium, and then you can set it to the side and let it dry. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up so that you can see me get all those four done. When you're done all of your pages, you're just going to set them aside to let them dry for a couple of hours. Um, or even easier is just to do it overnight if you do this last thing at the end of the day and, and just let them sit on your desk and they'll be ready for you the next day. So I'll see you in the next part.
So now all four sheets are dry. I let these dry for about three hours. I just turned on a fan on my desk and let them dry. And honestly, when I recorded this, it was pretty late at night, but I just couldn't wait till morning to start peeling. This is, this is the fun part. So you'll just slowly peel your fabric away from your freezer paper and magically your print is now on the back of your cheesecloth. So my right hand has the cheesecloth. The left hand is the freezer paper. And you'll see on the freezer paper, there's still a little bit of the ink left. I think that would be great to use in a collage too. But the main star here is that cheesecloth that has um, your writing on it that is obviously extremely transparent. These are just some junk mail that I had sitting on my desk. I'm going to make into some tags. Um, but so you can see through it. And I think that is the star. Now I will say the matte medium does make your fabric a little stiffer, but honestly it makes it a little easier to work with too. So here I'm just going to show you ways that you could layer. So if you have some fabric and then you were to layer a piece of that, the wording or the doodles or something over top of it, how cool that looks. And if you have a bright fabric, I notice it kind of pushes the color back a little bit. So if you have some brighter fabrics that you don't typically use, uh, that would be a great way to use those up. And then this was a new, I hadn't done doodles yet. I've mostly done just words. So this is the one I am really excited about. Just that I can take my doodles in my hand and put them onto fabric now. And so instead of using someone else's collage paper that I may order, I'm using my own pieces that just have my doodles on them. And again, layering pieces, you know, you can have um, one over the other. And here you can see how it's a little darker on the back because that's where it pulled the ink from. So if you think about it in layering, you actually have ink, matte medium, which is clear, then your fabric, then more clear matte medium. So... On one side, you have the fabric kind of subduing the ink. On the other side, the ink is your top layer as you flip it over. So that's why you get one that's a little darker than the other, and you could play around with that. Here's the one with the larger writing on it. Again, like I said, back darker on the back. I think this one would be great because if you flip it over and you use that back side, your mind still reads it as if it were script, but because it's backwards, you don't necessarily read it. Um, so if you're using song lyrics or something, people aren't going to be trying to figure out what you're writing. And then the abstract flowers coming off. I think these are going to be great. These I'll definitely cut out each one individually, except for that little grouping that's at the bottom. I may just use pieces of that. Um, for some reason, that one left quite a bit of ink on the, on the freezer paper. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what, if it's because maybe I I don't know. I don't think I used more ink. It's just a Sharpie. You can't really control it. So, um, but I'll probably save the freezer paper to use as collage fodder too. So those are the four sheets that I created with you today. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you end up making these, make sure to let me know or tag me on Instagram or Facebook. If you post it somewhere, um, it's just really exciting that I was able to get this transfer technique and I'm excited to use all of these pieces somewhere else. So thanks for joining me again in the studio today. I hope you have fun and happy arting.